So what happens once you've passed your driving test and how do we get a job? Today we're here with Driver Hire, a national recruitment agency, to talk to them what it's all about. Effectively, they're matchmakers. They've got a long list of companies that need drivers and a long list of drivers that need companies. So today we're going to meet Tony, the director of Driver Hire, Croydon and Sutton, and he's going to tell us what it's all about. So, come on in fellas. Let's go. So like we said outside, we're here with Tony from Driver Hire, Croydon and Sutton and uh, Tony, tell us all about Driver Hire and, and yourself. Okay, so, um, so Driver Hire uh, Nationwide is um, the largest specialist logistics recruiter in the UK. Um, it's a little bit unique in that it's franchised, so we're yep. one of a hundred offices doing what we do all around the country. Nice. Um, I've owned this business now for four years prior to which I did a job for Driver Hire nationally. So uh, very, very experienced with, with Driver Hire, but I've been in driving recruitment for 26 years. Nice, the poor 26, yeah, nice. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, so um, almost as long as you've been born, Lawrence. <laughs> Potentially, but we, yeah, can't disclose my actual age. Um, but it's, yeah, so you've got lots of experience. Um, so you're just the person really to come talk to because I mean, really, we're here today to understand the process. You know, let's take me today as I've, I've passed. I need to know where I go next. How do I, how do I get a job? And how do I not fall in with the wrong company, the wrong people? And you guys will obviously facilitate me finding something that works for me. So that's why, that's why we're here, really. Mm. Yeah, so for, for, for drivers, we, we help in a number of ways. Um, some drivers come to us looking for temporary work. Some drivers come to us looking for a permanent position and we can facilitate either. Um, so I'm guessing people coming from you are likely to be those with a, a new qualification. Brand new. Uh, which is always a little bit tricky in our yep. industry. That, that, that old um, it, you know, imbalance of how do you get a job without experience, how do you get yeah. experience without a job. Um, so we're, we're very used to working with drivers that have um, relatively new qualification. Um, to, you know, to, to, to to help them get into the industry. Yeah, nice. I mean, so thinking about it, obviously there's lots of agencies out there, all lots of people shouting over each other, trying to find different... I mean, how, how do I find you? Let's, I find you, what, probably on the internet, something like that? Yeah, so um, a lot of people come to us via referral from uh, people they know. Others will be looking for a driving agency. Yep. Um, and... Perhaps they'll, they'll type driving agency um, in Croydon or Sutton into, into Google um, and you'll, you'll certainly find us there. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, so those sorts of methods would be the way people come across us. Cool. So, I mean, I've wandered in today. I'm fresh, fresh with my past certificate. Literally got the pink or the blue one in my hand. So how, how, I mean, how does it work? Because I mean, I'm, I'm myself a uh, bit of a desk jockey. Um, I've never actually been a driver professionally, so, so this is new to me, genuinely new to me. So there is a real interest here to obviously give the best information out there to, to new passers. So I've, I've wandered in, how's, how's it look, how does it work, okay. do you need my inside leg measurement, you know, where, how far do we go here, how far do we go? That's, that's optional. Alright, okay, All right. Okay. carry on. Okay, so, so, so really there's, there's two things. Um, the, the first part of that is how do we get you registered? Yep. Uh, the second part of that is how we get you a job. That's the that's the two things. So, registration process is um, it it is a process. There's a bit of work to do. Um, the whole thing takes um, probably no more than an hour typically, um, and part of that can be done online uh, prior to coming in. So so let's just say you called us up. Um, yep. You found us on on Google. You found us uh, through a referral, or whatever. What about a conversation about what you're seeking to yep. to get? 
um, and just to make sure that what you want is the kind of thing we can offer so we're not going to waste anybody's time so the fact that you're here means that conversation probably went well yeah. um, and you will have done one or two things which is either uh, on sat online and filled in the kind of data collection stuff yep. that we're going to need so you know name address and license number all that kind of stuff um, work experience history um, um, uh, yeah, compliance with previous working time regulations, that kind of stuff. So quite a lot of that I can do before I even come and see you. Yeah, absolutely. So make things easier, possibly for you. It will save will save time for you. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, that's without being rude to you, the boring yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, um, and that's good to get that done before you come in. Cool. Second part is an assessment. So. A test. <laughs> yeah, an assessment. I've just done two of those. <laughs> Um, this isn't to check your ability to drive. Okay, you know, right. the, the, the government the driving examiner has said yeah. that you can drive. That's that, that's not in question. Yep. Um, but we like to understand your level of knowledge around highway code, vehicle safety, okay. traffic signs, that kind of stuff. Um, it's okay. <laughs> but it's but it's really important though because um, you know it's not it's not a pass fail test. Yep. Um, but we're looking for you know, logical understanding, and, and okay. we just need to be comfortable. That you do understand those those things. Well, it's nice because obviously, I suppose you'll be selling me to a company to hire me. Mm -hmm. So if I show that I've got a really good understanding of these things, mm -hmm. you'll think when you when you know one of you or one of your staff picks up the phone and says, "This Lawrence guy, he's not an idiot, largely. <laughs> um, he knows about the highway code." Um, then I suppose that's the kind of thing that helps to sell me as a new driver. Obviously, a lack of experience and it's just a nice little thing, like a little um, tick box. Or um, yeah, it will, will certainly help. But it gives yeah. us the confidence to be able to talk about you to our customers. So um, the the next part of the process really is a bit like this. It's just getting to know you. Um, we've never placed a driver that we haven't met. It's absolutely that's critically good. important yeah. to us. Uh, there are some uh, driving agencies that will do fully online registrations and placements, yep. even from different counties. That's not the way driver hire works. Yep. Um, we want to know you, um, yep. and we do the same thing with our customers. So when we're talking to you about a placement, we'll have had this, a very similar conversation with the customer. So it's, um, um, you know, you described it to me as a matchmaking process. I, I, I guess it is exactly that. Yeah. Because the having the license is kind of the table stakes. So yeah. you know, whilst you've just made a massive investment, and that's really important, um, and you can't drive a truck without the license, at this point it's kind of almost so what, yeah. without being rude, because you couldn't be here for, let's say, a class two job without a class two license. Um, yeah. So it's actually beyond that, what are your attributes? What, what's yeah, yeah. the job all More about? More of me as a person, and what's gonna deliver. Yeah, yeah exactly, so, um, so, you might think that the recruitment industry is all about taking the specification for the job and the specification yeah, yeah. of the person and saying, right, well, it's, it's a class two driver that can get up at six in the morning that's got tow techs and a high vis. Um, and you go, oh, Lawrence, well, he's a class two driver yeah, with yeah. a high vis and can get up at, at six in the morning, so match. It's not that at all. So because I suppose if I kind of said to you that I've got four children, I work another job, <laughs> I hate Mondays, Tuesdays and Saturdays, you might not match me with certain jobs. <laughs> well, and that's down to you getting to know me. Exactly. In fact, without specification, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be very We, we might struggle. We might struggle. But, but the point is that we, we ask more of the customer than just what time does it start, what's the PPE of requirement, course, yeah. what license is it. Um, it's about getting to understand um, yeah, the, the needs of that customer, the culture, the environment. Um, we always ask of a customer, you know, tell me about the best driver you've ever had, you know, why was he the best driver you ever had? How will I know when a driver like that walks through my door if I don't ask those questions of the customer? So therefore, it's about cultural fit for the particular job. And, and we can only do that by having those conversations with the customer first, yeah. and then having those conversations with you when you come in. So there's a, you know, it's, it's not a perfect science because we're yeah. dealing with people, but we basically you know, mitigate the chance of it going wrong yeah. you know, and, and just make it as 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 possible as we can to, to create a, you know, a good placement. Yeah, that sounds nice. The other thing about a new pass with a, with a brand new class two is that this whole job experience, experience yeah, job yeah. question. It's, it's important to I'll talk about it because it's something out there that needs to be addressed. It's, it's, 
it's not always going to be the case that you'll come in with a fresh class two license and I can put you straight in a class two job yep. because some companies will say quite simply you haven't got the experience I can't put you on the insurance and so therefore no but what happens is a lot of our customers have got a variety of different vehicles so some will have vans seven and a half tonnes class twos high up vehicles whatever um, and it could be that what we can do is get you introduced to the customer and demonstrate okay. The, you know, the good things about your work ethic okay. in perhaps in driving a smaller vehicle and I know that's frustrating if you just passed a class 2 you want to jump in a big truck and drive yeah. it that's why you took the license in the first place yep. but if we can get you working within a, in a business foot in the door then the customer gets to know you yep. um, and you know what really matters to a customer is things like attitude timekeeping communication willingness yep. um, you, know, you come back from a shift that have booked you for an eight hour day, you might be back in seven. Well, what's your question at that point? What else can I do to help? Yeah. You're going to be the kind of person they ask back. So then when they need a class two driver next week or next month, hopefully remember, do you remember me. Do you remember yeah. Lawrence, that guy that was helping yeah. you out and really willing and was punctual and yeah, yeah. great communication? Oh, yeah, we'll give him a go. Yeah. What we never do, we never ever do is, is bluff that you're an experienced class two driver okay. to a customer. Please don't do that. <laughs> because do that. what we'd never want to do is put you under pressure yep. in a new job. So every time one of our customers takes a new pass driver, yep. they know they're taking a new pass driver, and perhaps they might be able to distribute the work across other drivers and give you an easier day to get you started. It's really important that nobody's got any surprises. Yeah, absolutely. it makes a lot of sense, really. Sort of bludge on something a little bit easier, so to speak. Um, and then build up that experience, get your foot in the door, get your name recognised and your work ethic. Yeah, makes sense. So the two most important questions that I have, which inevitably anybody probably watching this will also have, which you receive all the time, what kind of money am I looking at and can you guarantee work? Because obviously that's me now, I'm looking for work. Mm. So probably first money-wise. I mean. Um, sure. Well, the um, I, I noticed you, you did your your video uh, where you interview drivers about how much drivers get paid. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed that some people in your in the comments on on that video talked about the fact that you know the, the rates that you were quoting yep. were different. Um, um, I mean, we got very very varied feedback, which was great. I mean, to be honest, I love the comments. Looking through them, it, it's fantastic. It's almost, I think goes up there as good as the video of information because you've got so many people that are in the industry and that's what we want. We always encourage people to comment, you know, good, slightly negative, there's slightly negative in there, um, but information nonetheless. Um, and I suppose that's what it was about for us. Um, and I know that it varies from, you know, it's going to be different from South Glasgow to South London or down in Exeter. So. I take you take it with a pinch of salt, but I know there's sort of different pay scales or like how you're paid and yeah, so per hour, per day, all these sort of things and yeah. So, so the, the, I think one of the reasons you came up with with, with those sort of variances is that um, the way in which agency drivers are paid can be different to the way that uh, a regular employed uh, PAYE driver okay. would be paid. So, a PAYE driver working you know regular job for regular company um, you know, will get. 28 days holiday a year, yep. they'll get an hourly rate, um, and that rate may often seem less than the headline rate that yeah. you might have been seeing like when, indeed. You, when you looked at Total yeah. Jobs and Read and Indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's really because um, a lot of employment agencies are advertising in those places and advertising headline rates. So we, f we fell into the trap, is what <laughs> well, you're saying. <laughs> we were suckers. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> So, you know, it, it would be absolutely illegal to advertise something that wasn't true. No. Um, so they do exist, but it's just they're yeah. they're a lot harder to find than just, yeah. it's on there, lovely, I'll have £12.80 odd an hour. Thank yeah. you very much. Cheers for coming. So, so the big difference in pay models often comes, um, so there are career agency drivers. There, there are people that don't want a full-time job. There are drivers that are individual limited companies. They've got their own private limited company yep. and then might work for multiple um, employers including employment agencies and because there's no employment costs for the agency yep. they can pay a higher rate which is that rate sometimes that you'll see advertised 
Okay. So the most important thing is that the, you know, whatever the circumstances for the individual, they're on the right pay model for them. So my advice would be just talk to us and we'll explain what we think the best pay model for the individual is. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're always going to pay as much as we possibly can to, to attract yeah. the best drivers. I mean, no, we spoke about it before, but it's about that, and, and we spoke about it obviously on the video, how much lorry drivers earn, and kind of like the, the feedback that Paul and I felt really from it, which was you can chase the higher amount of money and get flogged for it and maybe not work for the nicest company, or you can take a slight step down in pay, really nice company, really good conditions, they look after you, lovely vehicles. Yeah, so I suppose that's something that but, you, yeah. matchmaking-wise... But that happens to us all the time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we may have a driver that sees a permanent role advertised at, let's say, £30,000 a year, yeah. um, and that could well be available to them at that rate, absolutely fine. Yeah. But once we talk to them and learn about what they want, we may have another job that may not pay as much, but actually is way more suited to them, and the lifestyle might be better, the Spot hours... The yard's five minutes down the road from yeah. their house, and so, yeah. So, so really it's about you know, finding the best fit for the, for the person, for the best employer, uh, and then obviously they can make a decision themselves about whether that's the right pay for that job. But it, it's, it's often not the highest paid job that somebody yeah. actually really wants. It's not an exact science, no, as we've said, and I suppose people. that's the importance of you guys always meeting someone like me to find that information out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, right, I've got you. And so the, the second part of that question, um, or the question a little while ago was, can you guarantee me work? You know, is that? I said, I know it's a tough question, but is that the kind of? I don't. Yeah. You know. The actual answer is that you can probably guarantee yourself work more than I can guarantee it for you. And whilst that's a riddle, what I mean—that's good. What I mean by that is, if you're the kind of person that is does the things I said before, so you're. You know, you, you're willing, you're able, your timekeeping's great, your communication's great, you're asking for extra work when you get back, yeah. I know you've done your last drop, you phone in any collections on the way back, that kind of stuff, yeah. you're going to be the person that's asked back. So yeah. um, that's what I mean by you can guarantee yourself work in a way that I can't. Yeah. So the straight answer to the question is no. So if yep. you're talking about a temporary contract, you know, if, you're, if you're on an assignment and, um, and the, you're not needed the following day, yep. then you may well get stood down. That's one of the reasons why one of our customers might use an employment agency. And the hope, of course, is that we'd find you a job with a different employer the, the following day. Um, but the point I'm trying to, trying to get across yeah. is that the drivers we call first are the drivers with the attributes I've described. Cool. I totally understand. Tony, I'm registered. I'm ready to rock and roll. What happens next? Uh, so for us, next thing is background checks. So we'll take references uh, from your work history, uh, but also check your licence and any other certificates that you hold um, to make sure there's no skeletons in your, in your closet. No skeletons. Um, and then we need to get you set up with PPE, so high vis and uh, a mask um, in the current climate. Obviously. Uh, and probably the most important document you'll see, which is your timesheet, uh, and teach you how to fill it out properly so that, of course, getting you paid is a, it was, is a smooth process. Yep. Um, and from there, it's really about communication. So every driver we've ever taken on has had to do their first job for us once. Um, and often, because you're not known to our customers yet, yep. it'll be quite often an emergency job, so it might be same day call the following morning. Oh. So my advice would be keep your phone on. So that call that like crops up at 6 a.m., I look at it, I think, oh, I don't want it. Could be the call. Yeah, absolutely. It could okay. be your dream job. Okay, love it, yeah. Um, and, at, and at that point, really, you're, you're part of a team. Um, and, you know, our, our, our team is, you know, we place um, up to 50 drivers a day, typically. Um, but beyond that, there's, you know, that again of drivers that, that aren't currently working for us. Perhaps they've taken up positions elsewhere. They might need us in the future. Yeah. Um, and perhaps they're doing other things. Yeah. Um, and that community of drivers, they all get a birthday card from us every year. That's a, lot uh, of, that's a nice touch. They all get an invite to our Christmas drinks at the pub, most expensive day of the year for me. Lovely. Um, but it's... It's going to be a big pub. <laughs> it's going to be a big pub. Big, big function room. But, you know, but these are guys that, that you know, whether, whether at that time or previously have done lots for us, yeah. um, and you know, it's always a good opportunity to say thank you. That's so, nice. um, so, yes, be part of the team, absolutely. I'll be there in the pub. I'll be there. Well, you'll get an invite anyway, Lawrence. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So I think we've pretty much covered off what we wanted to today and sort of dispelled any 
um, sort of myths out there, some wrong information, some right information. Um, and yeah, as always, um, we'll be making plenty of other videos um, as part of National Driving Centre in the industry, training. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and always drop us a comment down below. And we'll see you really soon. From me and Tony, cheerio. Thank you.